and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle Earth painting tutorial. After the previous video, it would be remiss not to follow on from Mary with a guide to how I paint fellow fireworks thief Pippin. I kick things off with a base coat of staggered on scale green for the Elven Cloak. This is, after all, the breaking of the Fellowship version of Pippin, so he has that cloak. Sadly, out of production now this model, but you can easily find numerous cheap metal versions of the Hobbits on eBay for pennies, literally. Because Pippin's jacket is a kind of blue too, I decided to carry on base coating in Stegodon, with the intention of later pulling them together with different highlights. It's just so much easier to start a base coat on the vast majority of the model. Gets it all, gets you all off onto a good start. After fireworks and elegance, it seems appropriate to paint Pip's burnt trousers in scorched brown. Though boringly, that now has been renamed by GW as the nonsensical Rhinox Hide. Then I take my time on the next stage. Already we've covered so much surface area on Pippin that the next biggest is his skin. Talon flesh does the job here, as ever. But no need to rush. Take your time. It's the smart thing to do. After all, you need people with intelligence painting this sort of toy, model, mini, thing. Guess that rules me out then. As you can see, we all make mistakes and I just dab away after overdoing it and painting the cloak a little bit of flesh tone. As with the elven cloaks on both Merry and Legolas, for those tutorials check out my other videos, I use a Thraka green wash. If you're not sure on how to get my colours, check the description for the conversions to current GW paint. Still, I have very many old paints. For the sword, use chainmail paint. And as you can see, I peregrine took very little time on the sword. Just bosh it on. But don't forget the elven brooch on his neck. Whilst I paint bleach bone onto Pip's waistcoat, you may be able to see excellent HBO series The Newsroom in the background, thanks to a camera angle change. Hopefully they don't sue me. Then, with Reichland Flesh Shade, I start shading the hobbity feet and flesh. Now we've already had one layer of scorched brown, but what about the second? On his hair this time, thanks to my inefficiency in not painting brown all at the same time. Ready to protect against the storms of Karadras, I paint Pippin's scarf Codex Grey. We wouldn't want him going into the fires of Mordor and not but a skin, after all. With Griffin Sepia, I just shade the bone-coloured t-shirt, letting it seep into the recesses a bit. I find with pale colours, I end up shading and highlighting them more than dark ones. Depth of colour is key to making them look realistic, I find. With Fenris Grey, I begin to highlight the elven cloak just initially on the very extremities of the fold in the material, but then eventually filling more of the cloak in until the balance of green and blue-grey looks about right. It's not an exact science, but it seems to work for me. Well, sort of, depending on what you think of the final product. I settled on a hawk turquoise for his jacket in the end, so not a complete contrast to the coat, uh, not a bluey blue rather than it's more turquoise, but enough to make everything feel unified by that initial base coat of Stegodon. Um, we don't need to look too samey either, and I try and use that trick of uh, using a base coat and highlighting in different colours in different parts of the model uh, as often as possible to save time and get good results. As you can see, once the brightness goes onto the jacket, you do start seeing what you like to think as being hobbity goodness after the drab blues and greys I've done so far. Back to the jacket, only to do a very careful return to bleach bone. It's tricky, there's barely a millimetre of square shirt there. I fanny around for ages before finally applying the initial stroke. It's a very imprecise highlight as well, just trying to leave at least some shade in the recesses. And I also go back to the scarf with grey again after it got splashed with a wash earlier. Onto his trousers, I use Bestial or Morn Fang Brown to build up a thorough second layer. Picking out the folds in the material on this glorious model is very easy to do. The sculptor merely does all the hard work for you, despite them being among the smallest miniatures made by Games Workshop. I can't really recommend tracking down these guys enough, they're really fantastic. But as I've said before, even the more common metal hobbits do look ace, so don't worry if you can't find these out of production models. 
Then I dry brush the auburn curls with snake bite leather before painting the straps of Pippin's bag on with scorched brown. Yes, it is the third time I've used this paint, but this time I wanted to do it uh, last because of painting the shirt white already. It's easier to paint brown onto a strap carefully than attempt to avoid getting white on a thin brown line. You can barely see any of that shot by the way, apologies, but I'm painting his handbag too. The must have accessory for any trip to Mordor, long bottom leaf sold separately. Now a final highlight on the trousers with vermin brown, barely leaving any of the scorch brown underneath, but picking out the main highlights and leaving bestial brown showing in most of the recesses. Then with white, I paint the shirt. Despite saying it's too fiddly this way, if I had any sense, I'd have waited. But I'm a fool of a duke. Dark flesh forms the edge highlights for the bag and the leather straps. I love that brown. Great tone for Urukai flesh. Check out my tutorial if you're interested. I think I'll be doing some Urukai scouts tips soon. Shortest clip ever. Dark Angel's green dot in the centre of the elven brooch done. Now, with the great attention to detail, I use Talon Flesh to restore Pippin's complexion. Do take care to leave plenty of the wash in the recesses, particularly in the mouth and around the eyes, but also the neck areas too. Sometimes I don't bother painting the neck at all, because the shade does all the work. And hands and feet are best dry brush at this stage, I wager. With white, I begin work on his eagle eyes, or I suppose that should be peregrine falcon eyes. Mm -hmm. With black, I dot those eyes carefully and actually do a decent job first go this time. But with elf flesh, I can neaten up any cock-ups. Of course, there are always plenty. Having said that, I definitely think Pippin has come out far better than Merry at this stage. If you want to check out the Merry tutorial, see the other video. He's a nicer subject to paint, I think. The model is just a bit better. The Merry model's got a bit of a frumpy face for some reason. A little wash of Null Oil gloss on the blade there gives it a, both a shade and makes it look sort of shiny and a keen looking edge. Then we're only left to rosy up the poor chap's cheeks. He has been jogging on at quite a pace with Eleven's second breakfast luncheon and four Lembus bread in him so he'll get a bit red in the cheek after all. With elf flesh mixed with scab red, I make a nice red tone to dab on the cheeks there. I think this, and this alone, is the most important part of making this model stand out. It just adds character. And I used right clump flesh shade to wash the trousers, because I felt I'd covered up too much detail with the brown layers, and then with a 50-50 mix of the fang and space wool's grey, I do an edge highlight of the cloak. This time, to make the material look a bit more textured, I use a lot of fine strokes to imply the lines in the fabric. It gives a little bit of a dusty look to it. I think it looks, looks a bit better than uh, just plain highlights. Then dry brush the base and I add tufts of static grass and leaves cut out using the Green Stuff World Cutter. Then voila! A hobbit smart enough to trick a 10,000 year old Ent into fighting Isengard when he doesn't want to, but not clever enough to not touch an armoured skeleton balanced precariously on the edge of the well. Thanks for watching. Do check out my other videos if you're keen and hit subscribe if you want more. And if you fancy having a say in what I make next, head over to Patreon and pledge your support. More gaming tutorials on the way very soon as well. Thanks very much for watching.